that came upon America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now at this hour, senior Bush aides in negotiations with key members of Congress as we have been reporting on a resolution that would back the use of force, put the Congress on the record, backing the use of military force to retaliate for these terrorist attacks. Also expected, hoped for on the president's desk by the end of the day, an emergency supplemental bill providing a down payment, $20 billion, to help pay for some of the recovery efforts, the early investigative efforts, and after two days of offing numbing pictures, incomprehensible things happening across the country just moments ago when we were in that Pentagon briefing, the under Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz explaining what some of that money would go for. He said it matter-of-factly. Some of it would go to help pay for combat air patrols over Washington, D.C. and other major American cities. Unthinkable just a few days ago, but now U.S. fighter jets flying over the Capitol and other major cities as well it's as a, a result of the changing times forced by these deadly terrorist attacks. Leon. All right, John, before we let you go, we understand that you're going to be coming up in about uh, 14 minutes or so from now. You're going to be sitting down and talking with the First Lady, correct? That's right. First Lady Laura Bush, this had been scheduled to be a week in which she stepped out discussing more her efforts to promote literacy and education. Instead, of course, she was at the United States Capitol when the terrorist attacks took place, rushed by the Secret Service to a secure location. Just today, she sent a letter to school children, school superintendents around the country, asking that it be read to school children. The First Lady trying to step up in a very consoling, reassuring way to speak to the American people and urging parents to take some time to talk to their children about all the horror we have seen in the past few days. I I will discuss those efforts with her and her husband's handling of this crisis in just a few minutes here at the White House. All right, good deal. Thank you very much, John. John King at the White House. We'll get back to you then. Darren, over to you. Oh, of course, one of the big stories of the day, the uh, nation's airports beginning to uh, reopen in some airports across the country, especially up and down the East Coast. That is going to be an eerie experience. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Washington Dulles Airport. This is where American Airline Flight 77 originated on Tuesday morning. It was supposed to go to Los Angeles. Instead, it ended up crashing into the Pentagon. Let's go ahead and check in with our Kathleen Koch. She is standing by at Dulles. Kathleen, let's start with the question, is this airport open for business today? Indeed it is, Darren. About 45 minutes ago, we actually saw the first commercial aircraft take off. It was a Delta aircraft, uh, empty though, only had a uh, crew on board. It was headed actually there to Atlanta to uh, position itself for the resumption of flights nationwide. Now, only a few seconds ago, we saw the first commercial aircraft land here. So gradually, bit by bit, things are beginning to get back to normal. However, around the airport, you can see that security is very tight. We have seen armed U.S. Marshals position in various areas areas around the airport. Outside the airport, when you pull up, you see that there are huge concrete barriers, Jersey, the entire terminal. Now, inside at the American Airlines ticket counter, the police tape has now been removed. Last night, there were about 12 FBI agents in there. They were dusting the counter for fingerprints and checking it. All that now is gone. So there is, again, a feeling that things are beginning to get back to normal. But as Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta pointed out again this morning. Kathleen, to... Kathleen I'm sorry, we're going to have to interrupt you. want to go uh, live to Washington, D.C. Uh, news conference is beginning now. Attorney General John Ashcroft and by September his side, FBI 11, Director Robert Mueller. Let's listen in. It was a day of unspeakable violence and outrage, but also a day of heroism and sacrifice. As endangered men and women struggled to make their way out of burning, collapsing buildings, firemen and policemen, emergency rescue personnel struggled to make their way in to those structures. Many, and we don't know how many yet, never made it out of the buildings. Even as we continue to hold out hope that more of these brave Americans will be found alive, it is my duty as Attorney General to begin to process the provision of relief to the families of public safety officers who sacrificed so that others might survive the attacks of September the 11th. The Public Safety Officers Benefits Act of 1976 provides for approximately $150,000 in benefits to the families of law enforcement officers, firemen, emergency response squad members, ambulance crew members who are killed in the line of duty. This morning, the President of the United States, President George W. Bush, directed me immediately to implement procedures to 
processes and approval processes of claims for benefits under this act. Pursuant to the President's directive, the Department of Justice this morning has taken the following actions to expedite the delivery of benefits to public safety officers' families. First, the existing regulations under the Public Safety Officers Benefits Act requires that officers, families, and employing agencies fill out individual forms certifying that the officer was killed in the line of duty and that no disqualifying circumstances were present and that the officer was in fact related to the family members seeking the benefits. These regulations direct the Bureau of Justice Assistance in the Justice Department to give substantial weight to evidence presented by federal, state, and local agencies and to resolve in favor of payment any reasonable doubt concerning the circumstances of the officer's permanent disability or death. In view of the unprecedented loss of life and the debilitating injuries to public safety officers, I have directed, pursuant to the President's request, that this process be streamlined in this case. I am directing the Office of Justice Programs to exercise the full scope of its direction and its discretion under the statute and regulations to accept applications, consider evidence justifying claims, and to process prompt payment of benefits. In cases in which benefits are sought by survivors of officers killed in the line of duty on September 11, I am directing that blanket certifications from executives of public safety agencies be considered as evidence of eligibility without requiring further individualized documentation. In addition, the family claim form will be abbreviated and streamlined. Secondly, the Department of Justice's Office of Justice Programs is immediately making available additional resources to see that the claims of fallen officers' families are processed as quickly as possible. Staff are being brought to New York from uh, a variety of other settings to assist in case processing. Second, a separate computer database is being established to expedite and monitor the case processing. Third, lawyers from the Office of Justice Programs are immediately reviewing all cases from New York to make sure that those cases move as quickly as possible. Office of Justice Programs, fourth, uh, staff members are being sent to New York to assist with family contacts and the assembly of claim packages, including the gathering of pertinent records. The Office of Justice Program representatives will be available on site, if requested, to pre-certify claim packages in terms of the completeness of those packages. Uh, these representatives will also work with the Treasury Department to expedite the payments to families once claims are approved. The provision of benefits is an insufficient but a necessary response on behalf of the American people to the unknown number of individuals who fought fires, law enforcement officers, and medical rescue personnel who died answering the call of their fellow citizens on September the 11th. It is President Bush's and my hope that the actions that we have taken today will provide a measure of relief to the husbands and wives and children that have been left behind. I know that it is the nation's hope that this assistance will stand as a gesture of the inexpressible gratitude that so many Americans feel as well as a small tribute to the honor of the sacrifice of those who were willing to lose their lives and other, so that others might be saved. Additionally, today I announced with the Treasury Department a step that has been taken to provide additional security at airports across the country. As airports reopen and as travel is resumed, there will be substantially increased security presence, a substantially increased security presence on the ground at designated security checkpoints throughout the country. The Departments of Justice and Treasury have deployed hundreds of U.S. Marshals, uh, individuals from the U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Border Patrol, 
and U.S. Customs officials as part of a broad effort by federal law enforcement authorities to provide a larger police presence at airports in addition to the heightened security procedures already put into effect. We will take all precautions necessary to protect American travelers. Uh, finally, our nation calls on us in times like this to be at our best if we are to prevail in difficult times like this, we must be at our best. Since Tuesday, the Justice Department has received reports of violence and threats of violence against Arab Americans and other Americans of Middle Eastern and South Asian descent. We must not descend to the level of those who perpetrated Tuesday's violence by targeting individuals based on race, religion, or national origin. Such reports of violence and threats are in direct opposition to the very principles and laws for which the United States of America stands, and such reports of violence and threats of violence will not be tolerated. I now have a few updates with regard to the ongoing investigation. Legal attaches of the FBI around the world are receiving enormous cooperation from law enforcement authorities in the host countries that are cooperating with us to assist us in following up on leads. We have also received numerous offers of help from other countries if we need those uh, elements of assistance, and we are grateful for the assistance that has been offered and the assistance that has been rendered. With regard to federal law enforcement personnel casualties, there is an FBI agent assigned to the New York field office who remains missing. Three U.S. Marshals who are assigned to the Southern District of New York sustained minor injuries. We are also in the process of collecting information nationwide regarding the loss of life and casualties among law enforcement personnel. As of this morning, the FBI's leads hotline has received 2,055 phone calls. Some of these leads have been helpful to the investigation. The website, which was opened virtually immediately after the crisis, has received more than 22,700 suggested tips. The FBI is working thousands and thousands of leads. As of this moment, none of the black boxes has been recovered yet. However, we believe retrieval of the black box at the Somerset County location is the most feasible in the short term. And last but not least, the total number of hijackers to our best uh, estimate and our best knowledge given the information at this time on the four planes that crashed was at least 18, and less contradicted by uh, evidence which uh, we wouldn't anticipate. Uh, two planes had five hijackers, and two other planes had four hijackers each. The director of the FBI, Mr. Mueller, is here with me, and we would be pleased to respond to your questions. Were they ticketed passengers? And if not, do you know how they got on the planes? Um, yes, they were ticketed passengers. Are you convinced, based on the evidence in Florida and Boston and elsewhere, that the body was, was or may have been behind us? Uh, I, I'm not prepared to identify or to comment on persons ultimately responsible uh, at this time. How many people um, at this point are detained around the country, and why are these potential accomplices, Mr. Director, of such concern to the Bureau? Well, I can't give you a specific number. Uh, what has happened, as I indicated yesterday, that we're, uh, as a result of following up leads, we're interviewing a number of people. And in the course of doing those interviews, we find that a number of the individuals, when asked for identification and the like, are out of status. And when we find somebody out of status, we quite obviously bring in the INS and they are detained. And that is the policy and procedures we are following. And there 
concern to you regarding the investigation? Some, some may be, be concerned to us and some may not after we interview them. What sort of indication do you have of other, other operations being aborted? Uh, other